My name is Vahid Chitas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you so much for taking this time and being here with us this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, my name is Clint Barr. I am a professional growth coach, and uh, I'm tuning in from Brandon, Mississippi. All right, all right. The other on the other side of the Mississippi River. I got you. <laughs> That's right. You're far, yes. man. You're far. I try to stick to LA as much as I can uh, yeah. while we're in quarantine. So let's dive into it. Very interesting. Whoever is handling your Instagram, man, they're doing an awesome job. Cool pictures, cool content. Keep up the good work. Yeah. And then whoever is doing it, we, we're, we're offering, we're extending a job to them. If they ever <laughs> want to uh, make that a career and move over, Elite Mastermind is looking forward to have you on board. I don't know how much we're going to be able to pay you, but there's a job uh, for you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, had a, I had a great mentor that said, give it away for free and make it up on the back end. So maybe we can work something out. Awesome, man. Awesome. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So let's dive into it. I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of business owners out there. And these days, the word purpose is being thrown out there. I don't know if we truly understand. I don't know if I understand the word purpose mm -hmm. to the full extent. What can you tell us about that? Well, see, I think that there's a misconception that most people believe that their purpose or their calling is, is found somewhere out there, right? It's, it's in a job or it's in a career or it's, or it's in a destination. Um, it, it, it's whatever they think of society or culture says it should be. And in reality, we were born with our purpose. We were born with our calling. It's not something that we have to go outside ourselves to find. As a matter of fact, all we have to do is go inward, discover more of our true self, if you will, more, more, more of, a, of who we were created to be. Because our calling, I believe, is to be everything that we were created to be and offer that to the world and be the gift to the world that we were created to be. How do I go inward? So it, it, it's, a, it's an introspective process uh, that would require many facets. One being asking hard questions. I, I have another great mentor that, that tells me all the time, Clint, you cannot grow beyond your questions. And the harder the questions, the deeper the growth. And so being willing to ask the hard questions about yourself about your past, uh, about your desires, about your, your limitations, all of these factors. And really digging into those, seeking the answers is where it starts. Where do we get those answers? Well, that comes into the other facets. Journaling is one thing that I am a huge proponent of. I, I, I'm very big on it. Um, I don't believe that journaling something in the moment is going to give you an answer. Simply the, the act of putting pen to paper will help you connect the two hemispheres of your brain. That's a physiological fact. And you can start to find yourself writing things that you didn't even think were there. And the answers come to you much, much later, much later in the fact that you take a journal entry from six months ago or a year ago, and you read through it. And where you're at at that point in your journey, now everything clicks and the answers have been given if that kind of jives a little bit. The other thing we need is we need others. We need other people. We need community. We need to be uh, in, in, engulfed in authentic community where we can share the good, the bad, the ugly, all those parts of us that we've covered up and hidden with masks over the years and get feedback from others and, and really learn about how other people experience us in our truest form. And as a result of doing that, telling your story, getting feedback, journaling, attacking and answering the hard questions of life, that's how you go inward. That's how you discover who you are. So, okay, a few questions come in mind. Yeah. Would me taking notes in my cell phone do the same thing? Yes, to a degree, right? I don't believe that it's going to have the same effect because the studies that are out there, the physiological studies that show writing with a pencil or a pen, on paper, the physical act, are what cause the two, the, the synapses to fire across the two hemispheres of the brain, connecting your analytical with your creative or your emotional side. So you can get the benefit of um, some aha moments in the fact that you're looking, going back and looking at those questions and, and you're 
answering them in the context with where you are now in your stage of growth versus where you were when you wrote them. Uh, but I don't think you're going to get the same benefit or as, as deep of a benefit if you're not writing it out. Because I always, I, I, I mean, I cannot probably say it in a biological physical, I can't prove that, but I have known that for a long period of time that writing it, even though I'm not a big fan of just writing stuff, but I know every time that I have written it have got me a lot better results versus me not writing it down. So I yeah. definitely agree with that 100%. Yeah. And Think I know about there goals. are a lot of old schoolers that write notes and everything else. I always made fun of those people, by the way. If you're one of those people and watching it, I'm sorry. Hopefully you're not watching it, so you don't. I don't have to be sorry about it. But, you know, you, know, you, you had these older people, 60, 70 years old, they pull this little mini notepad, they pull out their, you know, they, it works. It works. That's why they did it. It, it does. I mean, think about, think about writing down goals. Everybody that talked about writing down your goals, right? It takes it out of the abstract and puts it into the physical. And I think that that is part of the process that you inherently know is working for you. My other question, authenticity being authentic and your persona. I have my own understanding of what being authentic means, but is being authentic, meaning you tell the truth all the time, because that's what a lot of people correlate that with. But can a business owner tell the truth all the time? I, I, I don't know that a business owner can tell the truth all the time because there's certain things that a business owner should keep private. And um, there's, uh, excuse me, that, he, you, that is, can you step out? Thanks. Okay, bye. That's my daughter. <laughs> yeah, she so, could be in it too. She, she could, she could, we, could, we could see how I think it. Yeah, hello, good morning. There we go. Now uh, my GTV got really excited. Cool. My right, daughter's too stop. small to be on the TV yet. But yeah. I assure you, within the next five, six months, she's going to go crazy on daddy. She wants to be in the... She loves the phone for some reason. Yep. She loves the phone. It's yep. like an addiction. And, Mine too. And, Mine too. Here's the crazy part. I'm, a, I'm an Android guy, Samsung, hardcore will never change right <laughs> my wife has this <laughs> my wife has the iphone and then my daughter at 15 months knows the difference between the phones so she gets pissed off on my phone because she can't <laughs> open it like the way she can open the iphone right, so she right. Gives a dirty look she's like what's wrong with your phone go fix your phone <laughs> right 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 oh goodness <laughs> yeah. Saying, go ahead. yeah i was gonna say there's certain things that a business owner should keep private yeah there's there's certain aspects of a business owner's life that should not be shared. Uh, protecting uh, the, the let's, we were just talking about our children, protecting the innocence of our children. We don't need to share everything about our children out in the open. I don't think that's appropriate. But authenticity is, is about telling the truth, but it's about being vulnerable. And, and vulnerability isn't something that comes naturally to us. In fact, vulnerability requires uh, a special kind of environment. Uh, and Brene Brown talks about that in her famous TED talk that on vulnerability is that, that that environment requires safety. And so when you combine safety, you're in a safe environment, you're with people you trust, you're with people that you, you, you know you want to get feedback from, that's where authenticity becomes the most important. So I think that the, the real way to answer this question is, is are you presenting something to the public or to whoever in a way that you think they want you to be? And that is, that, that's, that's a lack of, that's being inauthentic, right? You start to think, well, they'll like me more or they'll accept me more or they'll buy from me if I present myself this way, okay? That's not authentic. So sometimes when we look at what is something, the, another way to kind of approach that is, what is something not? And that negative assertion helps us paint a better picture of what it really is. So that's my but definition. That's a hard one. <laughs> that is not <laughs> easy to do because now if you present it maybe the way that you say being authentic, you may not get the sales in, you may not get the income. And then if you got employees or you're, you're responsible financially for the livelihood of others, now you're in this dilemma that, okay, the marketplace wants me to be like this. 
if I give them this, they'll give me in exchange. There is a there is an exchange sure. that most of the time is monetary, and with that exchange of of money or income, I could take care of these people. So the livelihood is here, the clients are here. I have to choose now. So it's it's, it's not it's not, it's not an yeah, easy balance. It's, it's not it's not really a choice because what you're talking about in commerce is an exchange of value for for. You, you give value for the value that you get in return, right? You, you charge a certain amount to provide value to that individual to solve their problem, all right? That, that is where the real economic exchange happens. But to be inauthentic to achieve that is going to result in fewer sales long-term than being authentic, being attractive, and, and people buying from you because they're a good fit and the, versus being inauthentic and getting buyers or clients that are not a good fit and cause a physical drain on you, an emotional drain on you, et cetera. So I don't believe it's really a choice. I think if you are authentic, if you present yourself for who you are, not for who you think others want you to be, you're gonna attract the right people and therefore you're gonna have a stronger business. Yeah, I think the key word that you just said right there, I think is long-term. Yeah. I think if we do, if more business people were thinking long-term, um, I certainly, have not done that all the time. Uh, there have been decisions that I needed to make for right now, temporary next six months to um, overcome a challenge, overcome an obstacle. Yeah. But if we do think long-term legacy kind of a thing, five, 10, 15 years, and I was just talking to, um, I was just talking to my mom uh, about this conversation and she's like, well, why are you not doing this? Because I know you're good at this. You could make money during these uncertain times your income could be a couple of times more than this and i said mom i have a daughter if i do it like that maybe i'll make money more maybe temporarily it'll be cool but is that how you taught me all the time is that how you you trained me is that how you did for me to watch and learn or is this what you said all the time because we have a very small neighborhood and community if I do things like that, would my daughter be proud? And can she take over my business one day? Or she's going to resent it and say, well, you know what? They made that decision solely and the only purpose was just to extract money. Mm. Would she want to follow my footsteps? If that's not the case, then we shouldn't do it like that. And I see so many businesses, unfortunately, they put money first, which is sad. Mm. Which is sad. Yep. Not that you shouldn't make an income, but... I think that goes in line with what you're saying, not being authentic for a long period of time. It, it, it does. It, and, and that putting money first, that's a construct of the false self, the enemy of your true self. It, and and that's, that's bred in, in the thinking of or putting value in what others think of me, what I have, and what I do. If your identity gets tied up in either one of those three, then your false self is running the ship. Yeah. And so it's like, Oh, what I have, I have this BMW, I live in this house, you know, so people think that I'm this, that's not authenticity. Right. But when we value who we are and the gift that we have to give to the world, now all of a sudden what we are able to do long-term changes dramatically because we're not, we're not operating from an inauthentic false self construct. We're operating out of our are given gifts, right? And so right. as a business owner, you do have choices. I think that there are a lot of things, for me personally, there's a lot of things I could do. There's a lot of things I'm good at. But is it really what I'm meant to be doing? You know, um, gosh, I, I, can, I can cook really well, but I'm not a chef. You know what I mean? My, my gifts are working with individuals and, and really uh, uh, I, I, I shine in that context coaching and context. When somebody gives me something and I can ask them questions and kind of pick around the stuff and really kind of go that route, that's when I'm at my best. Now, I agree could, with that I, 100%. could I go start a food truck? Absolutely. I have the business uh, acuity. I have the skill set as a, as a good cook, but I don't think that that's where my gifts are meant for this world. So, to shine. I, I agree yeah. with that. There's a lot of things that we could be good at. I mean, to me, it's all skills. If it's been done before, you could learn that skill. I mean, nobody's born a good writer. Nobody's born a good, you know, 
uh, all of these different nobody mm -hmm. is born good financial planner or nobody is born good right. like you know these are even being a father even being a, a, a parent there is no book i mean i don't know why more people don't write on that subject because <laughs> i was telling one of my buddies you're going to laugh at this clip i told one of my buddies i said listen when you do plan on having kids when your wife gets pregnant three months into it give me a call and i need to do a zoom training with you for about three hours. <laughs> I'm going to give you yeah. all of the shit you're going to go through that other fathers will not tell you. Right. Your wife is going to beat you up. Your wife is going to throw stuff at you. Your wife is going to go uh, borderline kill you, crucify you. All is, I'm going to give you all the stuff that other husbands are ashamed and will not tell. They're embarrassed that they had to go through this. And I tell you, the most important part is the hospital part of how you need to prepare yourself to go to the hospital and deliver this baby safely for your safety and the baby's safety and the mother's baby. So yeah. all of these, I'm like, give me a call. And he's like, you're going to need three hours? I said, listen, I'm giving you the short run three hours. It's more like 10 hours, but I'm going to like <laughs> give you the juice. Three hours, I'm going to save you so much headache. And guess what? Your wife is going to love you because she thinks you're just going to be so natural at this. Yeah, you got yeah, this yeah. Guy. Don't even tell her you did this training, <laughs> but I'm going to charge you. And he's like, what, well, are you going to charge me? I said, yeah, I'm going to charge you. Because if I don't t charge you, you're not going to take this thing seriously. He's like, well, how much? I said, I'm going to charge you 20 bucks. I'm going to charge you 20 bucks because I'm going to need some coffee while I do this session for you, right? And I'm going to teach you how to do that. So ev everything is a skill. It, it, it's learnable it and teachable. It is. It is. And, and, I, and I think we're born with the propensity, right? So like, there are things that are skills. I can learn how to hit a baseball, but I'm not going to ever hit a baseball like Barry Bonds or Derek Jeter or, you know, we could Ted Williams, right? They had a gift. They did, they did sharpen their skill. They did do that. Harper, please don't do that, please. They, they had to sharpen their skill, but, but I mean, I, I actually had the benefit of playing professional baseball in the New York Yankee organization for two and a half years. And Derek Jeter rehabbed with us one day. And, and I'm telling you, I knew that day after his first at bat that I would never be a major league baseball player because he was that much ahead, head and tails above, not just me, but everybody on that minor league team. So yeah, wow. skill, skills can be learned, but I do believe we have a propensity towards something. Um, the other thing that we have are interests. We have inherent interests. I, I love music. I absolutely love music, love the rhythm and harmony of life but I couldn't play, I can't play an instrument or carry a note to save my life, right? And I don't think I could learn to sing that would lead to any type of career, but I love music. So we do have interests too that, that um, influence who we are so and, and what we do. So what's the difference between interests and hobbies? The difference between interests and hobbies is that, is that, well, they're the same thing. Interests are things that we gravitate towards in terms of activity, but they, are, they don't require any skill. Okay, I would say a hobby is the same way, right? Versus a professional, you know, gift or skill is something that we do have the ability to do and that we probably should be doing if we're living out our true self. True. And, and I always, you know, I've had a lot of discussions what the difference between skills and talent is. I think talent, you're kind of born with, yeah. but I think skills are learnable and teachable like you could. You could try to do your best with learning as much as skills as you can, but just like you said, sometimes people they got it like that, and they sharpen up their <laughs> skills. They get there. So, why would why would you move away from b baseball and go do coaching? Was that okay. the, the the event that you said I I'm not gonna go see this thing? Hope I got a I gotta have a backup line. That that actually was not the event. Um, of course, in my in my young ego fueled. <laughs> 22 year old body I thought oh I, I may not be as good as Derek Jeter but I'm still gonna make it right and um so what happened was is I I suffered a few injuries and I really wasn't that good offensively to be honest but I had a coach in the minor league system that said um you know you you'd make a great coach one day and I didn't realize it at the time it wasn't until several years later that I started to take up coaching um that he was right. He saw something in me that I didn't see in myself, which goes back to that we need feedback from others to really be who we were meant to be, you know? Um, 
and being Sorry. able to take that, you're all right. And being able to take that feedback in the right manner, I think, is also oh, one of those things. Yeah. That sometimes yeah. we don't want to hear it, but we need to hear. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the 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 event was this coach telling me that I would make a good coach one day, um, and I I did try the baseball coaching um, part. I did a graduate assistant coach during my uh, graduate years, uh, trying to get my grad degree and really enjoyed it, loved it, but it still wasn't the thing for me. What I really enjoy working with is entrepreneurs and business owners and professionals and helping them discover more of their true self and take that to their career. Because when they do, I've seen this over and over, when individuals I work with finally just allow themselves to be who they were meant to be, they shine. Their production goes up, their energy goes up, their joy goes up, they become more fulfilled. And as a result, their employers, if they're employed, or their business benefit greatly financially because of that increased production, that increased joy, and how they come across to those they serve. I agree with that 100%. But I've noticed that as older we get, the more no. age we get, a lot no. of times those little setbacks or career changes for mm -hmm. us to find the true purpose. For us, Sometimes those things keep us down in a form of historical vision. That I went, I did this, my parents told me I was good at baseball, I mm -hmm. did it, I couldn't get to the end of it. So now I'm, I'm taking that in a negative way, not looking at it saying that this, I did it, to know that this is not something for me, versus they look at it, oh, I was a failure here, and I tried it, I give it my best, and it didn't work out, so let me not give it a try again in some other shape or form. So Absolutely. instead of looking at it as a positive way, saying, I love it, this is fantastic. I'm not going to go and spend another five more years in this career because it's not going to work out for me. So that's yep. actually you saving five years of your life, knowing that fact that this is not going to do. I look at that as a positive way, right? Yeah. If the client yeah. says no to you, that's actually a good thing. You should buy lunch for them. Because they just take you another five hours of you trying to convince them why you should give the service where they don't need it, they're not a good fit. Move right. on. But right. they look at it and they're, you know. Well, there's there there are a few individuals that I've worked with that have completely shifted and changed dramatically their career path. And that's usually because of one of those three false self constructs I talked about earlier. What I have, what I do, what others think of me. Take a doctor, for example. I <laughs> I have worked with doctors. So sorry about that. She wants to be, she wants to be in the video? <laughs> uh, she just pinched her finger. I have worked with a, a doctors that have... It's all right. Take care of it. Don't worry, honey. We got time. We got time. Uh, that have, uh, you know, have said that they only went into medicine because that's what their parents wanted them to do. And right, because right. they thought they would make a lot of money and they would have stuff, right? And yeah. so... It, yeah, people can shift careers dramatically, but let me tell you, somebody who's been a physician for 10 years and they've developed a lifestyle that they become accustomed to, it's going to be very difficult to just shift that dramatically to become, say, an artist that makes no money. And, and that's the thing so, because they have to wake up in the morning and go to work. So you shouldn't do. do it because your parents want you to do it. Because when they're gone, after 120 years, when they're <laughs> gone, you still need to wake up and go to work every day. Very so true. That, and it would be great if more people could get that type of information about who they are prior to going to college and choosing their career and their, all of those things. But let's take that same doctor, for example, that maybe doesn't necessarily really love being a doctor, but he's become accustomed to his lifestyle and he wish he would have been an artist. Okay. Just hypothetically, theoretically speaking here, that guy can still engage in his interest of art. Okay. And be who he is designed to be, which will inevitably free up his energy and free up his his ability to serve in that physician role so that he has more joy more fulfillment and he's more productive okay what happens typically to those people that entered that profession they've developed a lifestyle for their family that they can't get out of is that they don't they stop engaging those things that are them that are who they are right listening to music drawing or doing art maybe it's gardening or uh, you know, maybe it's just going outdoors and camping and they don't do that anymore because they work inside so much. They come home, they go to sleep, they get up, they go to work, they come home, they go to sleep. So if you can get them back into their interests, then they're going to thrive, even in a career that they're not necessarily thrilled about, 
but they've already put in the many years, maybe even a decade or two into that lifestyle. Definitely. Because I don't think money brings the, the fulfillment. Money is a tool that you use. And, and if you look at it right now in the U.S., um, I don't have the, 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 the source where I could tell you to go link it, but I'm pretty sure everybody can Google it. Doctors have the highest ratio of suicide, divorce, and bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, we all look up to doctors because they, they, they have the opportunity yeah. and the potential to save someone's life. That could be someone's brother, sister, mom, dad, cousin. I mean, they're dear to our heart. And when someone does that, you know, you want to thank them in any shape or form and they get paid well. But if you look at their lives internally, they're not fulfilled, even yeah. though they just saved someone's life. I mean, that's like the highest level of fulfillment. You know, yeah. you just literally save someone's life. But that's exactly what it is. They should pursue their hobby and interest so they get that fulfillment. And maybe being a physician is just something that they do for income. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm good that's at right. it and I do it for income. But yep. I think the next level of, of consciousness and level of self-awareness is what gets you fulfilled. If it's not money, you need to find that because if you don't, yep. money by itself is not going to get it. That's why we got so many rich people that are miserable. You have so many rich people that their kids use drugs, alcohol, <laughs> this, that, all these different things, pornography, all yeah. these challenges they go through. And you're like, you know, and then a lot of other kids look at they're like, oh my God, if my dad had this kind of money, I'll be doing this business. I'll be doing this. Why this right, idiot right. is not doing it, right? And I'm all like, because they're not on that wavelength. Yeah, they're that's not right. thinking that level. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of creating and making to get to the income. They were just handed the income without working. There yeah. was no fulfillment process in between. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's individuals that I know of personally that have the big home and the fancy cars, but can't afford to put furniture inside their home. But they want to give off the perception that they have it all, right? And that, that it comes back to that authentic, inauthentic um, uh, approach and, and how, you, how you go into life. Um, Clint, but, you know, how much is yeah. your house down in Mississippi? Aren't you oh, guys like paying almost nothing? Our 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 real estate's pretty pretty good. Yeah, we we don't we don't have to pay much. It's it's pretty good down here. Yeah, <laughs> of man. course, I mean, income's a little bit different down way, here too. The <laughs> cheapest house in my neighborhood is about one point two million, and is a shed hole. It, you will not be able to live in it. You got to spend two three hundred thousand to move in. And that's without furniture or anything else like that. And here's the crazy part, Clint. Let me tell you something. When you move into the neighborhood and you bought that house for 1.2, when you drive through the streets, those neighbors know you're broke. They know you got the house for 1.2. They're like, ah, what is, is yeah. this guy in the wrong neighborhood? Like, what are you doing here? Like, they look at you sideways. They're like, ah, yeah. you should have gone like three miles down. This <laughs> is not the neighborhood for you. So, you know, you guys have got it good, man. Here yeah, in LA, yeah. Crazy prices, crazy stuff. So a, right. a little nice house, nice backyard. Listen, having a front yard is a luxury for us. <laughs> it's a, it's a wow. It, you know, yeah. we go with the backyard, but if you have a front yard, you're like, wow, this guy's got front yard. I'm pretty sure over there you guys have side yards, backyards, front yard. Yeah, uh, depending on the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, LA whole environment is different. But listen, am I getting a signed copy of your book? What's going on with that? Am I, am I getting yes. that? What's up? So you tell are. us the name of the book and exactly where they can find the book. Yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to send you a signed copy. Just DM me your address and I'll get it sent out to we'll you. Do that. Thank you. My book is called Heroic Potential, Bringing Your True Self to Work for Higher Earnings, Increased Satisfaction and Greater Well-Being. Um, international bestseller on four Amazon lists. And uh, those included uh, business and personal success, business management and leadership. And you can get your copy from me, absolutely free, signed just like the heap, uh, from heroicpotentialbook.com. Now, if you don't want to get on my list, and I totally get that if you don't want to get it from me for free and you don't want to be on my list, that's cool. You can still get it from Amazon. It's available in paperback, Kindle, and it's on audiobook available on Audible. So. You can grab uh, all, of it, all of it there. Is, is, it you, is it you reading the book? It is not. I hired a professional voice coach. Because <laughs> <laughs> the production is so, so uh, laborious that I just wanted to oh, get yeah, it done no, and get it out that, there. That is not an easy thing to do. That, that is not. not an easy. I have a lot of respect. For, I, I had to do some voiceovers. And 
oh my god the amount of time that i put in this literally i walked out halfway through i was like get somebody else to do it i am not yep. doing it again i said it so many times it, it was like no 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 we're not doing this i appreciate Absolutely. you taking this time and yeah, being with us me. it's definitely definitely amazing next time get your get your son and daughter we'll do a live session i'll bring my daughter and they go back and forth see who's dad is <laughs> not for fulfillment and which <laughs> we can we can improve on yeah <laughs> absolutely thank you so much thanks babe talk to you soon bye bye